Today I built an epic steam train, a lovely little station, a whole bunch of contraptions to automate crafting track, and a tunnel through a mountain that will take us to a brand new area of the world. I also built a DeLorean. This epic episode has taken the longest time to produce so far as I totally finish off our starting village tying everything together, getting us ready for the next stage of our playthrough. But what will that be? Let's create. As usual, I started with some work off camera. I used my mechanical lift to go down the mines in order to set up my tunnel ball so that I can mine out a whole bunch more stuff. I was particularly lacking tough blocks. So I mined a whole bunch of that, found an iron vein and mined that, and then mined a little bit of zinc and quite a few diamonds. Once the mining was finished, I moved on to pathwork by removing a bunch of grass and adding paths from variations of gravel. I added grass, ferns and leaves for decoration and then fences around the areas to make it all nice and pretty. And then I even made the pond prettier by adding a bunch of leaves in there. Outside of the storage building, I linked up the paths and then built a bridge using McCaw's bridges, bringing the whole area together and making it look a whole bunch nicer. After that, it was time to tackle the tree farm. I started by removing the pods all and all of the fencing as well and then I added coarse dirt and rooted dirt to blend it in with everything else. I added some new fences around with lanterns on the corners and then blended the whole thing in with the terrain replacing the spruce planks in the middle with dirt variants and that brings us to now. It's time for trains, which means we're going to need a whole bunch of things in order to make them. In order to make train casing, we're going to need sturdy sheets, and in order to get sturdy sheet, we're going to need lava and powdered obsidian, and in order to get powdered obsidian, we're going to need to crush obsidian. Then we're going to need a whole bunch of track, we're going to need somewhere to put it, we're going to need a station, we're going to need somewhere where the train can actually go to. There's so much to do. So obsidian then. I've got 62 pieces of it, but I could probably do with some more. So let's take my fanciest pickaxe and a couple of buckets of water and head down the mines and look lava oh hello and skeletons as well good morning no there we go water more water There you go, just over nine stacks. That should be plenty. Now all I need to do is chuck a couple of stacks worth in here. Let's put in, I don't know, four stacks worth, and then just wait for it to come out. And the good thing is, you often get your obsidian block back as well as the obsidian dust. And now we've got a whole bunch. So I guess I need to process some of that into sturdy sheet. So I'm going to need more lava and a couple of presses. I just happen to have a couple of presses here, not doing anything. And over at the andesite farm, we just happen to have a whole bunch of space next to these very full lava tanks where we could set this up. So a spout is as simple as some copper casing and some dried kelp, but then we need to get some lava in there. So let's just run some pipes over to there, and then we need to get a pump in as well. And with a little bit of jiggery pokery in the wall, we can overstress the system. Oh, geez. There's only one thing for it, and that's to get rid of all this dripstone. Uh-oh. Think about that. We need to go to our blaze farm. Sneak away inside through all of this fire. Ow. Fill up a bunch of these blaze burners. Oh, jeez. And sneak back down there. Oh. And let's make ourselves a little tiny steam generator in here. Water. Pump. Pipe. Steam engine. Uh-oh. Oh, that was a bad idea. And there we go. We're now generating a whole bunch of steam power just from all of this. And it's all connected together and it's all rather lovely. Excellent. So one of those, one of those, one of those, one of those, and one of those. Stick in a few belts. Add on a couple of barrels like that. And a bunch of funnels. Connect some power and make sure that power's going around the right way. And now hopefully, if I chuck on a bit of obsidian dust there, it's going to go through there. Yes, it's going to. Yes, there we go. Look at that. We're creating the sturdy sheet. And now if I get a little bit smarter and I stick one of these in a filter as a deny, swap that out with a brass funnel with a filter on it, that's going to mean that all of the sturdy sheets end up in there and they can't come back out again. And with a little bit of andesite casing, we can make it look a whole lot nicer. Now all we need to do is make it go quickly. And now we're going at mega speed creating these sturdy sheets. And there we go. That's the last one done. We now have five and a bit stacks of sturdy sheet. I really don't think we needed that many. Although apparently with a bunch of them, I can create a flamethrower. But I don't think I need a flamethrower. So now we've got a bunch of sturdy sheet. I can place down a bunch of this brass casing and then just turn it into train casing like this, which is putting us into a whole new age, the logistical age we have just reached. I don't even think I need that many but i'm gonna take it maybe we are maybe we are gonna need a bunch of this stuff hmm in that case that gets me thinking our little iron factory which is pretty much surplus to requirements now although we do still need to be creating iron but the way we're doing it is totally unnecessary because don't forget we built this big old gravel farm to create the gravel which means that the majority of stuff in this iron farm room that was to create the gravel is totally useless so if i just smash all of this to bits not that I want to because I like it. We can put in a whole bunch more very exciting contraptions. Sad news, peeps. The iron farm is gone. Oh, jeez. Good news, peeps. 
The Iron Farm is back. We are washing a stack at a time of gravel. It's going through this funnel at the end, which has got a filter on it. Stop gravel going in, and they are coming out of here through these brass funnels, head into these compacting drawers. Wonderful. Which leaves us a whole bunch of room in here for a whole bunch more contraptions. So the next contraption we're going to be building needs a blaze burner. And on top of the blaze burner is going to be a basin, and then feeding into that are going to be a conveyor with two chutes above them. And one of those chutes is going to have copper ingots, and the other one is going to have zinc ingots. Above the basin is going to be a mixer and then coming out from the basin we're going to have another belt feeding into this storage drawer which is going to contain brass and there we go just like that we're all connected together and now all i need to do is give this blaze burner some lava and i could run tubes all the way from this room into this room where the lava is but there's no point when i've got all of these buckets here full of lava now the next contraption is going to automatically strip these logs apply the brass to them in order to make brass casings and then apply the sturdy sheet in order to make train casings but i also want to have some logs having the andesite alloy applied because i've never got enough of this andesite casing now, i believe i can do that as simply as yet yeah, sending logs through this circular saw and that will just strip them so that's easy enough to automate so that's pretty much the setup there we've got our circular saw that's going to strip the wood the wood's going to get split in these brass tunnels go under these deployers and then the casings will go into these barrels but i need to get brass into one of these and then i need to get the andesite alloy into the other one and i think that should just be a case of putting some shoots on those like that that, and then I can grab this andesite chest here and put it above that there like that and that should just filter into there and the brass one I could really do with automating it from there to there but is there really much point no we'll just grab this box and we'll pop that up there next to that we'll just give this a quick test if I put a log on there yep that's wow that was fast geez that's already in there I guess we don't need it going quite that fast Oh no, the whole thing, the whole system has stopped. Why have you not been giving them the, the, the buckets? What are you, what? You're supposed to give them the buckets. Why is there grass in here, Enderman? Oh, geez. All right, let's get it started again. There we go. It's going again. I must have left an empty bucket in there because it got very confused. There we go. Now it's doing it. Now we're creating andesite casings and brass casings. This is wonderful. But we want these brass casings turning into train casings. So at this point here, we need another deployer with another chute on top and the sturdy sheet box on top. Another conveyor, another brass funnel, this time with a train casing on it. And the barrel there with a the funnel going in there. And there we go. We are now creating train casings and andesite casings as well. But these aren't the only contraptions we need in here of course we need to start making some track and tracks pretty easy it's just a couple of deployers and a press with some sleepers which are basically just slabs and some iron nuggets before we get to track one thing i can do in here is i can get rid of these because they're pretty much useless at this point and replace them with these ones underneath here and this means that i can start processing andesite alloy so with a little bit more lava in our little guy here we should start making andesite alloy here he goes straight into the box okay so i need to do a few tests before i automate making track i want to see if i can make slabs and i know i can't make slabs just by cutting wood but i can turn it from stripped into planks and then wow you get a bunch of those from that and then we could automatically craft that into slabs using auto crafters but i think something like this should work if i pop a funnel on there that's going to put the logs onto the there they're going to get stripped down into planks and they're going to go into this auto crafter which should then create slabs and put them in there it does so now that we've got slabs and we've got iron all we need is some track so we need deployer deployer press and both of these deployers need iron nuggets well i guess the simplest way to do that is just to put a double chest on there and fill that with iron nuggets and then with a storage drawer and a funnel and a bit of power we should be good to go we can steal power from up there for the top bits and if we're smart here we should be able to power the conveyor at the bottom as well there we go so all i need to do is pop a funnel on there is this going to work iron nugget iron nugget stamp we're making track. We are producing track. This is incredible. Does it work though? Does the, does the track work? It does. I don't really like the oak on the track and I certainly don't like the look of the uh, the rollers, but with the right type of wood on there, I think we're good to go on this. Let's take our oak away from here. Spend a week getting all of the oak out of it. Put all the oak back in there. Spend a week getting all of the spruce out of here. To be fair, that's probably more than we need. We'll fill that up in there. And hopefully spruce track's gonna look a whole lot better than oak. I don't know why it's pink. Why is it pink on top? I don't want it pink. I mean, that looks better than the oak, but why is it pink? Oh, well, that's the least of our worries. Because now that we're getting all of this track through here, we got to figure out where we're going to be putting it. I've got to fit a whole station and a whole track here somewhere for the trains to turn around and 
somewhere for trains to actually go. Well, I don't think that's too much of a bad job. We've got a lovely little station. We've got a lovely little ticket office with some barrels and a till in it. We've got a decent sized turning area for the trains to turn around when they get to the station. And we've got a tunnel that doesn't really go anywhere, but that will go somewhere later. So out of all this, it's only one little thing that I don't like, and that's this horrible smooth stone block on there. It just doesn't go, so you've got to go. That's better. My little barrier's a whole lot better now. Which means it must be time to start building some trains and put them at this station. However, before we do that, there's one more thing I want to do. And in order to do that, I need to go back to that village. And here we are, just like that with our trusty jetpack, we have arrived. Now, cast your minds back all the way to episode one. Can you remember? There's something that we found, which we didn't explore, and I said I'll explore that later. And it's that temple. And it's time to explore it. I've left it so long. Now, I have no idea whether this is a pillager invasion temple or if it's friendly or... Oh, no, it's pillager invasion. Oh, jeez, there's pillager banners everywhere. How cool is this place? I want to see what it's got. Must have... Oh, hello. Must have something good in it. Has it got a door? It has. It's got a door. Good morning. Well, these, these levels leave a lot to be desired. Oh, no, wait, there's a chest. <gasps> Another smithing template. Two of them. Another goat horn. An onion crate. More cladding upgrades. And so far, I haven't been sure. Another chest. Wow, with more smithing templates in and more cladding upgrades and more goat horns. Okay, what do we got? We got seek and feel. That's the normal pillager noise. What about the next one? Ooh, that's me. Oh, what's this? Spicy one. Well, I honestly thought this temple was going to be a bit more interesting than this. It turns out it wasn't very interesting at all, and there really aren't that many pillagers around trying to get me. As usual, they've got a couple of iron golems locked away. Oh, and there's some snow leopards. Look, these horrible snow leopards that killed my horse. Here you, have a snow leopard on your head. No, okay. Fine, we'll just stack these two together then, and then you can go on there. There we go. Lovely. I feel like my work here is done. Okay, in order to build these trains, I'm going to need some more ingredients, the things that I don't have. And the first one's going to take us over into the nether. And I just need a small amount of glowstone, so uh, that should probably do me, actually. Although I will grab a bit more. I also need a little bit of blackstone. Oh, and I need a little bit of concrete. And I'm sure there's a really nice, quick and easy way of doing this on Java Edition, but I'm going to do it the old-fashioned way. Okay, that's a couple of stacks worth. Let's get it all wet. And then just use my pickaxe. Wee! That was really easy. Hmm, could be a while before that gets down there though. Oh well. And this, I think it's the rusted red concrete, is exactly what I need. I need a whole bunch of industrial iron. Oh, which is just iron ingots. <laughs> wow, that's a lot of industrial iron. And one other ingredient that I need are some flywheels. Now I only need four of those, that'll do. Let's build a train. Where am I going to build it? I could build it here, but I think the platform's going to be in the way if I do that. So maybe I should build it in here, because there's a little bit more room. Now in order to start building a train, I need a station. And that brings me to a question for you peeps. If we're going to have a station here, this place needs a name. So I'd really appreciate any comments with names for this area. 
There we go. Created a new train. No bogeys. Oh, good. It was me thinking I had bogeys all over my face. Speaking of bogeys, did you know that nearly 80% of the people that watched the last episode aren't subscribed? What are you doing? Hit that subscribe button if you're enjoying this series. Okay, bogey. Now, ideally, I'd really like my wheels to be like this, but unfortunately, with the create mod, you're only allowed two bogeys, which means that we can only have those ones, and we're going to have to do something interesting with wheels in the middle. But the first thing I'm going to do is get all of this joined together with these industrial iron blocks. And then I'm going to use these frame trap doors along here like this. And these are all going to be colored in with the industrial iron blocks as well. There we go. The train. Finit no, it's not finished. Don't be ridiculous. Next, I need a whole bunch of shoots, and then we're gonna basically just add shoots onto the side of those to create the edges of our boiler. Then we're gonna have some more industrial line down the middle, a little bit more at the end here, a block there, a block there, more of them across the top. Then we want these down the side there, like that. On the very front, we're gonna put these framed buttons. Right in the middle, we're gonna have another frame trap door, and this time it's gonna have train casing on. Then we need a whole bunch of these framed slopes, and they're basically just gonna be used to round off the boiler. Whoa, it's starting to take shape next i need to grab some of that glowstone we found and some blackstone and i'm hoping i can use this on the mason's workbench no carpenter's workbench no botanist's workbench no Glo glass blower oh geez oh i need a philosopher's workbench always with the more workbenches now if i put those in there there we go we can get some very nice looking lanterns in all honesty i only need one and it's gonna go there and guess what it's gonna be surrounded by more frame trap doors and more industrial iron and now we've got a little light on the front of our train a couple of blocks down from that, we're going to have a pillar with some blackstone on it. And on top of that, we're going to have a smokestack. Then we're going to have this peculiar bell, some more andesite casing with a little mini cube on there with andesite casing. And then at this point here, we're going to have a fluid tank with a steam whistle on top. At this point, we're going to have some of these framed extended slope panels to basically make the boiler look a little bit fatter at this point, which means I don't actually want these chutes here. So instead, we'll have some industrial iron and some more of these extended slope panels just there. Now along the middle of this we're gonna have some more trap doors and this is where our concrete comes in to give the train a nice stripe down the side then we need a little bit of shaft and we're gonna run that shaft down there like that between those two sets of blocks then i need to get rid of that trap door and that trap door and this is where we're gonna have these big ridiculous wheels in order to actually make it look like this train's got wheels now the front of the train is going to be having this little snow shovely thing here which means we need a couple of slabs down the side instead of four blocks there let's get rid of that block there put a furnace in instead somewhere to shovel the coal into with a slope there trap door there and a slab there and then we need to come out the back a little bit and do that so we can get some backward stairs in there however that said on this side instead of the slab we're going to have some stairs there to enable people to actually get on the train on the back here we're going to have a combination of vertical stairs frame panels and above those we're going to have these vertical frame divided stairs and vertical frame divided panels at the top and then we can put in our windows back with the industrial line we're basically going to color all of these in apart from the very very top bits and now with a dash more of this and a little bit of cut blank deep slate we can make all of this look a whole bunch nicer from the back and we should probably add some valves in as our little bumpers so that brings us to the very top which is just going to be slabs along there and then slightly raised slabs in the middle and then slabs down there and we're going to just have these off hanging bits at the side there like that and then i'm just going to color all of this in with polished blackstone and with a corner piece there and a corner piece there and those colored in as well that is our cab pretty much done and the seat is going to go there and that means we're only missing in one ingredient and that is the train controls and there we go train controls are in so that is the engine of our train complete it's completely done and i think it looks wonderful although it's quite hard to tell what it looks like exactly in this little tunnel but steam engines need coal so it's going to need a tender which means more bogies now everything i made so far i've done in creative first in order to test it all out but i have not made a tender in creative so this is totally going to be made up as i go oh, how could it be what could possibly go wrong so i think the trick to a good tender is just going to be a whole bunch of trap doors yeah that's not bad need some more bumpers they're not called bumpers yeah they're called bumpers mate however the front of this probably wants to be a little bit lower down than the rest of it now if we fill all this in with coal at the back here at the front possibly one of those sort of like that that kind of looks like a mound of coal going towards the back i don't like these bits here and there we go with a few of those like that get quite a nice looking little pile of coal on there yeah, that looks awesome. So all I've got to do now is glue it all together and hopefully not get any of this stuff on the wall stuck to it by mistake. 
If I click on this and go to assemble train. Oh, it's done it. We only need a name. I have no idea what it's going to be called. Train one. I could do with some comment ideas for that as well. well there we go. We now have a assembled train. How much of it's going to fall apart as I drive away? Let's find out. Let's sit on the seat. Activate the train. Go into uh, third person. And here we go. Oh, yeah. Look, I've left a couple of cubes. <laughs> Oh, and it hits the roof coming out. Well, there we go. We've got a train. Look at this. This is so fancy. It's a shame those flywheels don't spin, but it's also a bit big for going under here, but it's fine. We're all glued in. Let's try again. Oh, yeah, there we go. We're all stuck together now. Let's go. Oh, look out. I don't know if that's going to fit through my tunnel either. <laughs> but I don't care because it looks magnificent. Oh, I'm glad it fits at the station. I was a little bit concerned that it wasn't going to meet up with the station and it was going to take half the station out, but that fits perfectly. Oh, look at it. It's marvellous. You've got no passenger carriages. I know. <laughs> we don't need passengers, only me. Jeez. Got no way of storing any of your stuff. Well, I know, but shush. I'm just happy with my little train. Oh, it's just occurred to me I've done my roof slightly wrong. These little bits on the edge here are supposed to be a block down, but that's fine. I'm happy with that for now. We can change that later. But it does feel very much like there's one thing missing. And here it is. I have built something to go with our incredible steam train. And of course, it's a DeLorean. It's a bit janky because, well, train blocks and all that and the way train track works and things. But we should hopefully be able to get this parked in front of our train. Just like that. Amazing. And then I need to use this train coupler to join them both together. What are you doing here? Clear off. Get out of me DeLorean. No llamas in the DeLorean. Thank you. Jeez. And there we go. We're all coupled together, which means I can now push the DeLorean onto our next area. But there's a couple of things I need to do before we get to our next area. The first one is to move this train so we can put a station in here. Can we put it all the way in here? We can. Excellent. Hold space to approach the station. Nice. That'll do. And of course, all trains need drivers, which means we need one of these conductors caps, which you get from wall, precision mechanisms and string. And with a little bit of luck in here, we can adapt some of this to make this work. If I just turn off this chute for a second. I chuck on a couple of bits of wall. Oh, there we go. And then get rid of that funnel there. Give that one a precision mechanism. Give that one some string. And then we'll just throw on these hats like that. Is it going to do it? It is. Wonderful. If I put this deployer on there, above this andesite casing, and give it a hat, I believe... There we go. We get a little chap. Hello, sir. Can I pick you up? I can. We now have a little conductor for our train. Come on. Go in the train. Get on that seat. There we go. We now have a train driver. This is incredible. And with a little bit of paper in this sturdy sheet, I should be able to make a train schedule. And then if we've got more than one station, we can basically use this schedule to add in a train station and give it to the conductor and he'll just drive the train there for us. This is incredible. Anyway, we don't need that right now. What we do need to do is actually create somewhere for this train to go. At the moment, all we've got is this tunnel with a big old stone wall at the end of it. So I've got a whole bunch of digging to do. Use your tunnel ball. Yeah, but I need it to go upwards because we need to come out of this <laughs> landscape somewhere. <laughs> we've got a big hill to dig through. Oh, my goodness. Oh, and I've just run out of jetpack. Oh, jeez. This is not ideal. It's trying to do some crafting to make life easier for us. We need a brass pickaxe. Then we need a brass drill head. Then all I need is a couple of cogs and one of these steam engines, and I can make myself a portable drill. Not that I've got any idea at all how it works. Now, I'm assuming this drill works just like anything else, and I can just mine things with it. Maybe it needs power. Oh, yeah, it needs fuel and water like the jetpack. Okay, fine. In that case, I'm going to make a bunch of these tanks, and I assume these work in the same way as the other things. I hold it in my offhand and then press Q. No, that's not how it works. How do I fill it up? Right click on lava to fill it, the tank. Okay. Oh, well, okay. Well, that's easier then. Fill the water tank up with many, many water. And fill the lava tank up with many, many lava. Ah, there we go. We're full. Excellent. Now, this portable drill should start drilling stuff. Well, that works well, doesn't it? 
Oh, it's still filling with fuel. There we go. It's full of fuel and water now, so I can fill up this lava tank again. And the water tank. Now, this isn't going to really do a great deal at this moment in time. In fact, it's very slow. It needs enchanting. And it just so happens that on one of my journeys earlier in the season, I happened to get a digging enchantment. And I believe, I'm hoping I can do this on the anvil. I can just put that on there. There we go. And that now means it should do a three by three. There we go. Well, the tunnel is now finished, sort of, kind of. It's got a hole all the way through it, it's got track all of the way up, and it's got lights, but it's very ugly, and it could probably do with decorating at some point. I've also laid the track, the other side of the tunnel, out quite a distance into the forest, but it doesn't actually go anywhere yet. But overall... I'm really happy with how all this has come together. I really love this little area that we live in. I love my little train. I love my DeLorean and I love my tunnel. Even if the train is a little bit big for it. Uh, speaking of trains, uh, uh, excuse me, driver. Oh, jeez, it's going without the tracks not finished yet. Quick, Indy, we need to catch train. Come on, come on, Indy. Oh, not this again. Quick, 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 quick. Faster, 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 faster. Let's just cheat up this hill a little bit and then you can ride. Go, go, go. Come on, Indy, we've got to catch that train. Oh, jeez. There's nothing at the end of the line. What's going to happen to the train when he gets there? We need to stop it. There it is. Come on. It has emerged from the tunnel. Come on, Indy, we've got to catch this train. Go, go, go. You can go faster than this, Indy. You need to go faster than this, buddy. Come on. We're so close. We can get it before it gets there and slow down this train. Oh, jeez. Quick jump on. Watch out, Indy. Oh, no, it's to the end of the line. Oh, well, that was a little bit anticlimactic. Well done, Indy. You did a good job chasing the train. It could have been better, but it wasn't too bad. Well, while we're here, I better tell you about what's coming next. So here we are on day 500. And if you remember all the way back to the beginning of this series, I told you about the mod that I've got called Time Control. And if you remember, I changed my day length to double the time. So that 500 days is actually the equivalent of a thousand days. Jeez, must be time for a movie. And time to move away from this area and to somewhere new in the next one. I wonder if you can guess where that will be. 